Yo, this is Pinky the Hunter. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to Red Feather Falls. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Roosevelt elk that live there. Let's start off with some very basic information. The weight is between 300 and 500 kg for the males. For the females that's 260 to 285 kilograms. Then for the score, they are scored by their antlers, so the females will always give you zero score. But the males on the other hand, they can go really big. And the score can go up to 436. I will go over the score and some score sheets later in this video. I got a lot to say about that. So, but like I said, I will do that later in the video. Then we have some equipment in the store you can buy to call the elk in. First thing you should buy is the elk bugle caller. That's just the basic elk caller that calls in males and females. The range is 220 meters. And only down part is it lasts for uh, yeah, 4 minutes in game. So that's 2 minutes IRL. So you have to keep calling quite a lot. This caller and the other, the elk calf caller by the way, also they both work on Roosevelt elk and on Rocky Mountain elk. So you don't have to buy as a different color when you want to hunt Rockies. The second one, the elk calf color, it's more the wolf color in the game, but it also calls in female elk. Only females, males don't listen to it, but in some circumstances that could be handy as well. And yeah, it calls in elk, so I had to put it in here. Finally, the last one, the sand spray. I think that's quite important. With the Roosevelt elk especially, but all animals that live in herds, I like to use it to be honest. Because what you'll see is many times that when a herd comes in, the biggest ones, they stay in the back a little bit. And when you call them straight towards you, you kind of have to shoot them yeah, in the order they come in. Otherwise when they get too close they spook. And especially with this elk caller, because it works so short, so you kind of have to keep calling. With a deer collar that lasts way longer, you can take some distance, so you can get away with more, but I would absolutely advise you use the sand spray with hunting Roosevelt elk. Especially with the new herd formations, because it just gives you more time to check out the whole herd and pick your shot. More relaxed, so it's very useful. Another thing I almost forgot is the, the sand spray. The range of the sand spray is 150 meters. So you have to get them a little bit closer, call them in a few times, and then when you think they are within 150 meters, put down the sand spray and they should come. But the callers, they work 220 meters, and the sand spray of all species only 150. Then we have the spray spawn map for Red Feather Falls. As you can see when you start the hunt all the elk are on the right side of the map on this side of the map. I'll show some routes later that I like to use. This area down here by the way going south from the Darkwood Lodge you can find elk here as well but I mostly get overrun with whitetails and a lot of does so yeah when I'm hunting elk specifically I mostly go north from the Darkwood Lodge because this area here it can feel really empty that's a thing more about it later in the video as well but that's just the elk you have to look for them a lot but when you get a call in this area you it's almost guaranteed it's an elk because bears don't call sometimes there's a lost black tail coming down from here and sometimes white tail go up a little bit but mainly 90% of the time the calls you get in this area are Roosevelt elk, so you want them specifically, that's what I do. Next, a little bit about the herd formations. As you can see here, elk live in herds and they 
are in mixed herds, so males and females. Last year we had an update. For 13 years in this game it was always only males or only females. Homogeneous as the devs called it themselves. But last year we had an update and since then they mix herds. And some of you really loved that update. Some of you really hate that update. And I personally belong to the group that really hates that update. Because now as well it took me quite some time to find a herd of elk that actually had some bulls in there. I found a shit ton of herds with females only. And single females. So, And what these mixed herds kind of do is you, when you get a female call you kind of have to go check if there's a bull in the group as well. While in the past when you had a female call I sometimes went 90 degrees to the side or the other direction. So I, they didn't bother me anymore because I knew there were only females. But now you have to go check every one of them. And how many times I got a female call and called them in wasn't the best spot. So then I used sand spray just to make sure that if there was a bull or a few I had the time to shoot it as well. And then one female comes in. And I think I have the idea for my feeling I'm wasting way more time hunting elk now than in the past. And it is already quite hard to get a big one as it was. Because yeah, they are hard to find sometimes. You really have to go out to look for them. So yeah, but like I said, some people really love the update. Some don't. I just don't. But that's personal I guess. And it's in the game now. So nothing we can do about it. We just have to work with it. So it is as it is. But here is the herd formations. They mix herds. Male and females roam together. Here we have the list for the permitted ammo. I'm not gonna name them all, but pause it if you want and check it out yourself. Only thing I wanna add is it says arrows, but that also means bolts. You can use the bolts for the crossbows as well, except for the crossbow pistol, of course. Here I have some things I took from the Hunter Wiki, real quick, about the camo you can use for the elk, for the deer species. Elk is a deer species, so I won't go in this too much, into this too much. There's quite a lot of info. And I'll just put a link in the description directly to this page of the Hunter Wiki. So you can go look that up yourself if you're really interested. But for the newer players I wouldn't bother too much. They're quite expensive. And with basic camo you can also get your elk when you stay prone a lot. So I would invest my money when you're a new player in some in a bow or in more useful stuff, to be honest. So for the camo there's also another little thing. There's something called the environment app on your hunter mate. As you can see here, I'm wearing the Boone and Crockett, except for the t-shirt. That's just a basic t-shirt. So let's see this and then press G and keep it pressed and then you can choose your games but you can also choose camo view and you get a, a view of your character how it looks and as you can see here the t-shirt has no camo that's the gray dark gray is no camo then the brown the rest the boon and crockett that's animal specific camouflage that's what it means so and then there's another one that only counts for the 3D camo. Let's have a look at that. Here I changed my basic t-shirt to the sneaky 3D summer forest. <laughs> it's a whole mouthful camo. But have a look. Now it looks like this. <laughs> Great, still no camo. But that's because this is the forest thing. Because when I'm be running, let me see, when I'm going in the trees, it does work. So that's personally something I don't like about those camos. So that's why I barely use them. Let me see. Now it's green. See? So it works here. But when you run out in that open field again, you have no camo at all. So maybe that's why it's called sneaky. That's a little sneaky thing that it has. So... <laughs> But yeah, this is how the environment app works, so if you're into that, check it out. And finally, a little thing I found. 
here is the Van Helsing the Halloween costume. The hat was from last year and from uh, two years ago, and the the rest of the clothes is from last year. But <laughs> what I find, I think it's a bug. If it even works, I'm not sure. But look at what it shows here. Doesn't matter where you go, field, forest, it's always full green, except the hat. But the ones they implemented last year looks like they work like the 3D does, but wherever you go. So if that's true, it's ten times better than <laughs> the other camo. So <laughs> not sure if it's fully a thing, but I thought, what the hell, when I was messing with this, this is really strange. But yeah, interesting little inside info. Next thing I want to talk about is something where a lot of elk tutorials on the Hunter Classic go wrong in my opinion. It's the field judging. Oh, they always tell you to look for the back tines. And although the back tines are important in the end, that's not what 90% of the time breaks your elk score. Especially with the Roosevelt elk. When you check the score sheets, I'm gonna go over a few in a minute, then you'll see that it's mostly the G3 point. This one has huge G3s. Those are the two. The, you have six points in front and the top ones sticking forward. Those are the G3s. And those mostly break your score. I'm gonna shoot this one, I think, and then we're gonna compare some score sheets. I can show what I mean. So let's go to that. Okay, here we have two score sheets that we can compare, but first of all, I have to admit this gave me a real headache the, to try to figure these things out, and I still don't get some things, but uh, those are the crown points and the abnormal points and how those are calculated or not calculated at all in it, so I don't really get that, but more on that later. And these two comparisons don't have any abnormal points, they just have the normal elk frame so that's perfect for this comparison the one on the left is a 413.9 I shot that a few years back and the one on the right was the number one on the leaderboard a few days back I guess it got recently refreshed because that's quite low actually so but it's a perfect comparison I would say let's have a look the main thing the length of the main beam is the first thing that's just how long this F line is, the total length of the antler. So, but on this case, those are quite similar. One of them is even exactly similar. And the other one, it loses two points. But that's not much. Then we have the G1. That's the first point sticking forward. That one on this one is 18.7, 18.3, and 14.8. 14.0 so here it loses 8 points already compared to this one then we have the G2 the second point sticking forward 18.5 and 14.5 this one has 15.0 and 18.1 so those are actually similar I would say uh, the third that's the main culprit that's the one that screws over all your elk scores. This one, 19, 19. This one, 7.5, 7.3. So that's a big chop out of the points compared to this one. Then we have the G4. That's the big one sticking upwards. But if you have the big frame like this, then that's always like this. So that doesn't matter, doesn't change much. It's even it's exactly the same now that I look of it. <laughs> okay, yeah, so those don't change much. Uh, you could call this the same frame. <laughs> then we have the back tines. The G5, G6 and G7. And look at what the comparison is here. This one actually loses points. Five points on this one. To yeah, Compared to the lower scoring one. The second one, the G6, is also loses 10.45 so 10 10 so this one gains five more points g7 10 10 10 5 so that kind of compensates the last one so but these back times yeah they don't differ much but the end score 
does while the frame is the same so the things that ruin it is these three and mainly G3 there's also the circumference the that's the thickness of it is being measured but that doesn't change at all I have the idea when you have this big frame that's always around this so and those are not high numbers or high differences anyway so and yeah this last column is being subtracted those are the differences so if you see here this one actually loses more on the differences than this one but still it scores way higher so it's kind of a confusing one but that's how it works and now the other thing that I don't really get is the yeah these two up here the crown points and the abnormal points I'll show you a picture and then we'll come back to that this one it's nothing special it scored 327 I think but when we're talking about abnormal points and crown times this one is ideal one two three four five six so let's go have a look at the score sheet okay here we have the score sheet 327.9 it scored but let's see the crown points one two three four there were four points on this top part so those are called the crown points then abnormal points one two it had one here and one here so if they're on the main beam they're called abnormal points then but then nothing happens with them they're not added or anything or it stays zero because down here e total e this one total length of abnormal points yeah zero when it's zero it's all fine but in my idea how I read this this should be added and then subtracted from your total score added in this column so that's weird and the crown points total I is down here add they should be added together again up there and then that total should be added to your total score again if I read this correct but yeah it's zero so I don't get it one thing I did see was that they do add one point to the uh, total amount of points 16 point elk is kind of the max you can get in a way I thought but yeah here are two points added here it's 9 9 so it's 18 <laughs> so that means the abnormal points are added to this not that it's taken in the rest of the score by the way but just something I, I noticed there are some missions that need you to have elk with points or does that say typical or something I don't even know but this was also a bit weird <coughs> the abnormal points are added here and should be yeah added up here and subtracted here again but nothing and none of that happened so a bit of a mystery now that was enough of me talking about elk time to actually go hunt some elk activated some competitions I have to get the lightest elk so I'm looking for females actually kind of and the lightest white tail and some more so I need to shoot the white tail with 270 so I brought that and black tail competition with the muzzle loader the cap lock so that's also in my backpack but the first part here I will not be encountering much black tails mainly elk and maybe some white tail so I'll be going like this and see if I can find some elk. I'll be following the river up north. And when I get here, I'll talk some more. Hmm, mushroom. <laughs> That's a bull elk. Dare I 
I see something that looks like a decent elk. Am I lucky? First thing I find, a nice one. It was decent. But you see the G3 missing already on that side and the other side as well. It's completely gone. So. <laughs> Hmm. I think he's all alone, by the way. <coughs> Best spot here, but. No, oh, well. I'll wait for the footsteps. And he's at 38 meters when I hear them. <coughs> Like I said earlier in this video, I normally like to use sand spray a lot, but in this case I could see what's coming. I think he's all alone, so I don't have to waste it. Finally, here are the footsteps. It took forever. <laughs> Some females behind me, at least call, so at least one. But nowadays it would be male and female, so to be a bit careful. Let's see. Three on a ten, maybe twenty. 29, okay. Well, that's a decent start at least, because sometimes you cannot even find one over 300, so <laughs> happy with this for now. Hey, look at that. There was a female behind me, I just killed that. And then I look in front of me and I saw that. <coughs> that's a decent one, but again, I already see what's happening. The G3 is missing. On that side, come on, turn your head, it's hard to see like this, but I saw it for sure. But, <laughs> he got himself stuck. The pancake. Yeah, yeah. I know you're there. So, and I use sand spray for the females behind me. So he will keep coming for a while, I guess. Well, sand spray should be almost expired, but let's see, let's just get a little bit closer and take a shot with a bow at him. Or shall I just shoot him with a rifle? Screw it. He's in perfect... oh wait. <laughs> the 270 is not permitted. Let's not be a pancake. Let's try to get a little bit closer. Okay, about 40 meters, we can do that. Hope. Let me see, 40 meters, ah, that should be perfect. Here he is. And this, this one actually got three back times on both sides, so that's pretty decent. But you see here, right here, this G3 here is completely gone again, so that's why the estimate only went up to 350. So, no. Yeah. Back time is not everything. 343. That's a pretty decent elk, actually. The luck I have lately <coughs> with all these damn G3s are broken, because literally almost every big elk has it nowadays, I have the idea, so. But 343, I'm pretty happy with that. Mm, here we have a single female. Okay. 
Yeah, I took a little detour tour. I put up a tower here a while back and I never used that. And it's also a good opportunity to talk about tree stands and stuff for this map. Get that question many times where to put a tree stand here for elk. My advice is always don't elk spread out too much. One time you find them here, next time you find them on the other side of uh, of the area. So there's no spot I can think of that's consistent on this map for the elk at least. So the best chances you have for a tree stand for Roosevelt elk, I say, are on Settlers Creek because that's the smallest map. Oh, wrong button. Also, Whiteheart Island, you'll notice when you hunt elk there. Sometimes you find them in the South Island, and other time you find them on the North Island, and you really have to go and look for them. There's no consistent spots really for Roosevelt elk. And especially this map, in my opinion. So, this tower was there and was collecting dust. So, let's recollect that and put that on another spot where it's more useful. Here we have another thing that will be quite a nuisance sometimes in this area. These white tailed does, they are everywhere sometimes. And what I mostly do is just take them out because then they stop stealing all the calls. But now that I said that, <laughs> for new players it might even be better is not to waste an arrow on it. You waste money, you don't get money back for them. So in this case I could have spooked it as well. It would have spooked in that direction. So it wouldn't bother my hunt anymore. So that's another option. There we have another doe. She got herself stuck on a rock or something, but in the distance I see a group of elk, but by the looks of it, those are all females. Damn it. Here we have another little tactic I like to use. I was over there at the riverside, that's where I called them and put down sand spray. And now they're all moving in that direction, so that's awesome. I moved around them. And now I'm gonna slap the last one on the air so it spooks. And then they all spook in that direction, and my plan was going that way, so... Perfect solution. Goodbye. Nice. Something else I like to do on this map. Now I haven't had a call for well, at least five minutes I think. So mostly what I do is I resort to running. Theoretically when an animal comes in random now it should give off a call. That's how the game mechanics work. So, but it's no guarantee it is still risky. Bears can still screw it up or sleeping animal or something, so. But, like I said earlier in the video, this area can feel really empty. So, yeah, this is what I do. Hey, what's that? Mushroom. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just quit the recording, and the second I press the button I hear the elk call, so perfect. Stop running. <coughs> what is it with these elk today? This one also is stuck. It's absolutely tiny. Great. Something else I completely forgot to mention earlier, by the way. The elk caller is one of the few callers where the animals respond to. Let's see if he does it. He's been calling all the time, so... No, he doesn't, of course. 
but the red deer collar, the moose collar and the elk collar they trigger a response, oh there he is nice, I just followed the river so at one point I called from a different angle so he would get unstuck and that's what happened so come on, give another call I think these have the best sounding calls in the game and the reindeer, I love the reindeer calls but that's just because the reindeers are magical for me <laughs> let's shoot this pancake before he gets stuck again somewhere yeah you see me, I don't care the last thing you see Oops. okay then we are right about here I made a new recording of this because the recording I made during the hunt I sounded like a pancake so <laughs> but in the hunt we are now right at this point from here you can kind of do two things you can follow the river that way I would advise if you're hunting only Roosevelt elk or your main target is Roosevelt elk to do that and just go in that direction towards this corner up here but you could also go to that direction from here up until here or something you can also find Roosevelt elk but you'll be finding more blacktails and moose as well so here you have more action probably but here the action you get is more Roosevelt elk main call you get in this area is Roosevelt elk so and then when you are here in this corner what I mostly do is go back down and I follow the border my luck is mostly more on the outsides the inside mostly is very empty of this area for me but it's no guarantee the thing with the elk is just that they spread out so much that's why you really have to go look for them always that's that's a bit of the down part of the elk so what try it the border to me it's been very good and down here somewhere you'll be getting a white tail call probably a doe many many times and that mostly indicates to me that my elk route has come to an end here we got the next herd well three I think small bull and two females oh no wait there's another one uh, wait I put down sand spray kind of behind me so if I spook them now they go the opposite direction again Ooh, there's another female so yeah one tiny bull I believe that one <laughs> that's a really tiny one 60 to 110 I think they don't go <laughs> very much smaller than that but I think I'm not gonna shoot it because when I shoot it now that female over there will or might nah, I'm just gonna shoot it screw it That's him, right? Yeah. Almost looks like a female. <laughs> now, where do you go? No, don't go left. Hey, and one doesn't even spook. <laughs> Two don't even spook. Because that one that's running there is a secondary spook, so <laughs> that's also a really weird mechanic sometimes. But works to my advantage, so fine. Harvest this monster, a nice one for the thumbnail. <laughs> 67.3. Well, <laughs> oh, at least pays for the arrow. The tracer is 10 GMs as well, so. Nice. What kind of voodoo shit is that in the background? What the hell? track just shot a female I found a bull track but that was really tiny so and that one looks really tiny 
least for the stop out. Right behind a tree or not? No. That's another monster like before. 35 to 80. Jesus. <laughs> Let's see which one was bigger. Oh, there's another one coming. What's that? Is that a male or a female? I think a female because the other tracks were all female I found, so... Let's see what this monster scores. 72. Bigger than the other one. Nice. 11 gems. Yes, profit this time. 10 for the arrow. 11. So that's one profit. <laughs> awesome. Okay, and from here I can show you a lot of clips of me shooting females. And I did find two more small bulls, but I yeah, managed not to record that somehow, so <laughs> no idea. But yeah, I think this is it for this video. It's turning into a very long video. I wanted to make a short video of me talking about some score sheets and stuff but it turned out into half an elk tutorial me doing talking about score sheets and an elk hunt that took way too long so thanks for your patience <laughs> and uh, yeah this is it for this video thanks for watching and hope it was useful and hope to see you for the next one